next on It's Your Season. God said, don't worry about Instagram. Your mouth will be your Instagram. Your, your miracles in your hands will be your Facebook. Because when you lay hands on the sick and when you give words of wisdom, they find out that you cannot buy this from 1995 on a commercial. You cannot read this out of a book. This has to be given to you from the Spirit of God that is on high. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Stay tuned. There's more to come. Hey, good morning. I'm Bishop Chief Felton bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I am excited to be back in your living rooms in 2021 with new content, with new messages, new encouragement to help push you into your destiny in Jesus Christ. I want to personally thank all the letters and well wishes from across the nation that have been blessed by this message and this broadcast. We are going to continue to bless you from North Carolina all the way to Chicago. Thank you so much for your love and your outpouring of blessings on Trinity Christian Center. This morning, this message I'm going to preach to you is going to change your life. It's going to make you look at things differently and empower you to keep walking through Christ Jesus. Watch this. But to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men, ye are the light of the world. A city is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it, what, under a bushel, but on, but on a candlestick, and they giveth light unto all that are in the house. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to just do some teaching, amen. If I give it a title, um, Sister Jane, I'm going to have to call you later on, amen, with the title, but I just want to teach this morning. Uh, so we can get some understanding of where we at as a body of believers, amen. Where we at as a church, as a body. But most of all, where we are as individuals. Because you cannot have a collective body without individuals. And individuals must make up their mind that they're going to live for the Lord. Can I get a witness? They have, to have, they have to have that mindset that come hell or high water, I'm living for the Lord. And I, I and and in this day and time is so it's so so pertinent now that we make a a stance and let the world know, not the church, but the world. Somebody say the world. We're so accustomed to allowing the church to know that we are anointed and we are appointed and God has a call on my life. Well, it's not time for the church to know that. It is time to take that anointing which you was appointed with and take it out into the world because the world is hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging and the church is saying that though it's silent. And the reason why the churches are silent is because we have been put to bed and not went to bed. It's the difference between going to bed on your own volition and on your own power and say, I am tired. I have had a long day. I'm going to bed. But it's another thing when, the, when someone tells you, get in the bed and close the door and get ready for tonight, so and so, without a choice. And with the government saying that we're not essential, it's, essential, it, it's, it's, it's a sense of it telling us that you talk when we say talk. Oh, y'all want to hear that right now. You say when we say but right now, you're not a situ in this matter. But this is what I'm teaching this morning. It's going to pull the covers off that, that the America cannot exist without the church. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? For it is in the scriptures that this country has been founded. And what, we, what we're teaching this morning is understand that our reverence and our power is remaining in that we are the salt of the earth. We are the preservers of the earth. We are men and women that have gone through different things in our lives so that we can stand up like a light that's shining and lead men and women, listen, to Jesus Christ. It does no difference if you're going through hell and high water right now and can't lead anybody out. It makes no difference of your past suffering and all your, your personal things that you had to go through if you cannot lift up your voice with a testimony and help bring somebody out. For that's how you got your saltiness. Do you not know when we accepted Jesus Christ, we didn't have any salt in us, but he made us salty through his spirit. He made us effective through struggle, through tears, through people lying on us, through people talking about us, and you maintain your integrity spiritually to be able to stand up and still preach to sing, still praise their energy that is saltiness, that is effectiveness in your life 
You have gone through disease. You have gone through surgery. You have gone through bad reports and good reports. But yet, and all of that has come before you. You still yet standing by the power of God because you have a, you are salt that has never lost its saltiness. And some people can go through things in their life and lose their saltiness over situations, relationships, bad jobs, bad dilemmas, and they'll stop doing what God has called them to do. I want you to look at somebody and say, not me. It's going to take more from the devil to stop me from doing what God has called me to do. Because he has allowed me to live through certain things that other people die in. That should give you a red flag that there's something special about your life. You cannot talk about that person in front of you, behind you, or beside you, but you can calculate the time that you should have committed suicide. You have could have calculated the time when you was in a position that you knew you were about to lose your life. But God said, because you're so salty, baby, you're so effective, I've got to use you to preserve somebody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull you out so you can pull somebody up. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's why you didn't suffer in vain. Your suffering is not in vain. And Jesus is saying right now that so you are the salt of the earth. You are the preservers of society. You are the hinderers of the devil. You are the, that thing that's placed in the earth to keep things from going bad. Do you know that it's just salt fish and salt meat to keep it, to preserve it, so that when they're ready to eat it, the elements wouldn't keep it, wouldn't kill it. Do you not know God said you are the salt of the earth, meaning that he has packed this world with so much salt that he's preserving the earth. He's preserving the church. He's preserving families through the salt of the earth. And God, he said, if you lose your saltiness, then that thing that I need you to preserve will rot before your eyes. Are y'all getting anything out of this, amen? I just feel like talking today, amen, because I know that the Holy Spirit is saying what is coming next in this world requires the church to stand up and be counted. What is coming next, amen? Yes, we're in the midst of a pandemic. Yes, we're in the midst of people getting shots and getting these, these, these coronavirus shots. But God said, now I'm getting ready to clear my throat and be getting ready to dispatch the salt of the earth to re listen, recalibrate that it's not by power nor my might, but it's by his spirit. And although it may be just a few, but God can take a few and change the whole world because now the earth needs salt oh my goodness we need salt to kill these de demonic entities the Holy Spirit said do you not know with the stagnation of the church that means that the enemy is trying to put a stronghold in certain places that when we were consistent the enemy was always being buffered but now that the church took the bait yes go ahead and write me email what you, whatever you want to do I'll answer you back we took the bait and we cowered down instead of standing up and now we got devil work through the spirit of God to cast down these demons and to cast down these suicide spirits because when there's an absence of good evil will always be prevalent you are too salty to allow the enemy to come in your life and dictate what he is going to do in your life through your health, through your mind, through your finance. You have done lift. God said, I've done put you in a salt shaker and got you so well coated that you are more than a conqueror. You can go through this. You can take a licking and keep ticking because what I'm preserving you for is to pull out a side of society that you haven't seen before. That's why I didn't allow the enemy to kill you because you're connected. Tell somebody say I'm connected. I'm connected to men and women that has no idea that God is about to send me to their lives and help pull them out of the muck and the mire. I am connected to men and women that say, God, I never knew you exist, but God preserved you through relationships. He preserved you through all hell and high water. He preserved you through bad days and good days just to be able to pull somebody out of darkness. And what do you do when the person that needs to be pulled out of darkness is not able to be pulled out of darkness because the one who's carrying the light is living like they're in darkness. What do you do when that which thing's supposed to be effective is ineffective? We have lost our savor. We have lost our effectiveness. We have lost that get up and go because we're listening too much of what society is saying instead of what the spirit of God is saying to the church. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? 
It is time for us as a body of believers to activate the Holy Spirit, that which is in us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit has to be activated. It has to come out of us. It has to transform our environment. The Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Don't you think we need a time like that right now and what we live in? Do you not know that we need men and women that have the ability to lay hands on on the sick and they recover because we're living through some perilous times and we need the Holy Spirit of God to permeate the body of Christ to activate these salt shakers in the sanctuary to command healing and breakthrough and signs and wonders but we need God to rain down on us. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen, I begin to study this in Acts to Acts, the, I think it's the second chapter, the fourth verse, and the Bible talks about that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in tongues. They began to demonstrate that which was on high now is inside of them. That they, they received power. From who? From on high. That means that they were able to go out and demonstrate, not only by word, but by power. The question I want to ask is this. Are we teaching God's people the right way? Have we gone astray? Have we got the message so crooked and crooked until power has left the sanctuary and all we want is position and notoriety? We have become a Facebook sanctuary. We have become an Instagram sanctuary that likes and likes and likes and look at me, look at what I'm doing. But it's not really ever been about us. We've got sidetracked with society that God said all you ever needed, baby, was power. All you ever needed was power coming out of your mouth, out of your hands. And God said, and I will draw people to you. And the reason why we in the body of Christ, we don't have that many people being drawn like we need to be drawn because people are drawn to power. Oh, y'all get me the thing out of this. People are drawn to power. Not success. Success and power are not even in the same room. You can look successful and not be successful. Look at this thing on TV about how, how they fake success on Instagram. They had a nice backdrop of Hawaii. They put up a toilet seat, y'all, and took a picture behind a toilet seat, and they made it look like there was an airplane seat. I said, do you, will you look at this? They had all these different strategies to make it look like it was, you, that person was successful. But down in the spirit, they were not successful. They was just trying to build a following. Because they knew if they build a following, then certain sponsors would come and give them money for being that successful. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you not know that God never called us to be famous? He never called us to do all this? He said, when you open up your mouth, the thing that I died for going to come up out of you that when when Christ arrived, he said, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto me. And when you begin to open up your mouth with the soul and the situations that you've already survived, God said, don't worry about Instagram. Your mouth will be your Instagram. Your, your miracles in your hands will be your Facebook. Because when you lay hands on the sick and when you give words of wisdom, they find out that you cannot buy this from 1995 on a commercial. You cannot read this out of a book. This has to be given to you from the spirit of God that is on high. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? We have to understand that we are powerful, not famous. <laughs> After you seek fame, you'll never get anything. It is what you do, your gift will make. So if you operate in that gift or that power of anointing that's been embedded in you, it will make success come to you. It's not something that you have to fake. It's something that's going to come naturally. Because of who you are and what you live through and how you survive. And look at what God did for me. Look at what God did for me. He can do it for you. Look how he raised me up. Look how he turned my whole life around. That is the platform in which we, the salt of the earth, must be exuding to the world. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Success can't keep you. The Savior can keep you. Success can make you look good. You got people that's got more money than a bank and just as miserable as I don't know what because how can you be happy outside of Jesus Christ? How can you have earthly success and know that eternally you'll be damned in hell for the rest of eternity? How can you sleep comfortably at night if you don't have a relationship with Jesus? 
No one likes this type of preaching, but I'm going to preach it anyway. This is not a message of talking about, oh, God get ready to do this and God get ready to do No, it's telling you right now, you have been given through Christ Jesus everything that you need to be successful, to be this, that, and the other, but you got to let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? And I understand that Jesus did not send them out before he filled them with power. It was, an, it was listen, it was necessary to be filled with power. It is necessary right now, not just to say I'm saved, but to say I'm saved and I'm filled with power. It is necessary, listen to this, it's necessary to not just come to church, but live for Christ. It is necessary to keep your body and your temple pure and so the Holy Ghost can flow through you so you won't be a form of godliness, godliness but no power. Don't be a good shouter and not a good walker. Don't be a good preacher and not a good walker. Don't be a good singer and not be a good walker. Don't be a good usher greeter and not a good walker. Don't be a good uh, elder or deacon and not be a good walker because the world needs walkers and not talkers because talkers talk, walkers walk. And God said, now I'm getting down, I'm separating the sheep from the goat, the weak from the tear, the weak from the willing, the ox from the weak. God said, I need walkers. I need people that will walk by faith and not by sight. I need people that will walk on water until the enemy is baffled to find out how is she walking on water when all hell is breaking loose. I can tell you because she's found out or he's found out that they are the salt of the earth. And when you begin to look at your life, I'm feeling the spirit coming on me right now. When you feel, when you begin to look at the spirit over your life, how many times you're supposed to have been dead, sleeping in your grave, is you got to know in your spirit that something different about me. That's something that is, I can't even put my finger on it there's something different about me you've gone to funerals that people die with the same thing you had you've been to situations that God said look at you with your blessed self God said you went to so and so house they lost their house you still got your house you went to so and so them they lost their car you still got your car God said what is it going to take for you to realize that there's something special about your life tell somebody say something about me When the doctors call you in the, in, the, in, the, in the room and they close the door and they tell you what you got and what you need to do and you look at that conversation that was years ago and you're still here. When all hell done broke loose in your finance and you had to hide your car, two car locks down so nobody won't take your car. I know I'm preaching to somebody. When you had to do this and do that, when you had to rob Peter to pay Paul, God said, I'll, let, I'll watch you live through things that people don't even know you live through. Huh? Had you feed your kids and you, and you went on a fast so they can have something to eat and so you wouldn't start, oh, y'all gotta get this one. I'm saying, God said, I done watched you live through stuff that I know there's something about you that the enemy wants to sift as weak. But God said, but I made sure that your faith remains strong. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? You can look, listen, listen. You can look good on the outside, but surviving on the inside. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You can look so good till you make suffering look successful. But people don't realize that you're going through. You're just, you're just looking like this. Because why? When salt is in your life, even when you want to give up, you don't give up. Is that, does anybody know what I'm talking about? When you're going through a bad day and people don't know you ain't got a dime in the, in the bag. You ain't got enough gas in your car to make it through the week. But you learn that through it all, I'm learning to trust in Jesus. So you get up out of your bed and you fix your hat. And you get your nails done. You put your suit on. And you walk out the door and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And let me rejoice and be glad. I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord and God said that is effectiveness that is a woman or man that done lived through so much stuff that this don't even matter are y'all hearing what I'm saying so when we come back when the church is on the comeback it is going to be our time front row and center to redefine what it is to walk with Jesus it has to be our time to redefine the sanctuary. Let me put this point out. Y'all sit down. I got to bring this point out. In order for something to be non-essential, you will have to make it look stupid. Can I get a witness? In order for something to be non-essential, you will have to look at it and say, you know, that's not even a revelant. We're not even going to pay them any mind. They don't know what they're talking about. And God showed me the reason why the body of Christ in the 21st century is deemed non-essential 
It's because of all the foolishness we allow to go take place in the church. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? And it has been some foolishness. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? We have let so much go on in the body of Christ. So now when it comes to the table of seriousness, people will never take us serious based upon what we, what we allow. Notice, I, I didn't say what happened, but what we allow, leadership. Because the absence of leadership, there's chaos. There's no order. If, if you come to my house and my house is dirty and, and it's just completely dirty, do I have a right to tell you how to clean your house? In fact, I should go somewhere and sit down until I get my own house cleaned up. See, God showed me that the church and this dispensation, we've got to clean the house back up. The only way people are going to take us seriously, the only way the spirit of God is going to flow directly back through the church is that we as a body of believers have got to start cleaning up lifestyles and cleaning up mannerisms and mindset out of the church. Because God is saying, I will not flow through a church who still Lord is money, who still Lord is sex, who still Lord is still dabbling in different and then coming on Sunday and doing, God, I can't flow through that. You have to make up your mind that if God be God, then put all the other gods behind you. Then I can flow through. Then you will be taken seriously. Then you understand a certain level of respect that comes back into the house of the Lord when we clean our act up. Mm. Amen. Thank you so much. I got all these people got one or two hand claps. I take them too. God knows. Because God is saying right now, when you clean up, you can look up. Oh, Y'all got to get that right there. See, I told, I, I told somebody, I said, I'm believing God to take me to the next level. God said, well, if, you believe, if you're telling people that you're believing me to take you to the next level, what are you doing with the level you're on right now? <laughs> because stuff is not going to make you worship me more. Because if it did, then you love me for my stuff. But, but it's the testimony. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out of your way. It is the testimony of yesterday that keeps you in the sanctuary today. It is the fact that you know in your heart, you may not tell everybody around you, but since it's just me and you here today, we might as well go ahead and say it. You know in your spirit, you ain't supposed to be sitting here. You're not even supposed to be dressed like you dress. You, uh, let's pull the cover. You ain't even supposed to be breathing the same air. Why? Because you know who you really are. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When you know who you really are, you don't ask God for more stuff. You begin to thank him for the things that you've already been blessed with. Can, can, can we be a little bit transparent? I ain't supposed to be living the life I'm living. You're not supposed to be living the life you're living. You're not supposed to be driving. Ladies, you ain't supposed to be getting your hair done, your nails did. Brother, we ain't supposed to be getting suits. If you based upon how he found us, we wouldn't fit to live and we wasn't ready to die. So everything about you right now, God made it. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? My wife, do you think this woman would have been in my life if I was smoking dope and jumping rope? Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Going to the club, getting drunk, taking a picture with the lady that sells the roses? <laughs> I had a flashback, y'all. Forgive me. <laughs> you think she will put up with that? Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Do you not know if you're single, listen, whether it be male or female, when God brings somebody in your life that a quality person and she's got business about herself, he's got business about, God said, you know you don't deserve that. Take care of that. Cherish that because it's not how I found you. God has a way of building men and women who are salt of the earth. The salt of the earth will say this. It's because of my stance of, in him that causes him to bless me. It's not that I'm perfect. It's not that I'm well put together. We all make mistakes, but one thing we can agree on this. When I'm doing it for the Lord, I'm going to try to do it all I can do for God because he's been too good to me. He's healed my body. He's turned my life around. He's placed my feet on solid ground, and I got to give him a praise. I, I got to give him all that I got. I got to show him that this is the light, and let this little light shine, Lord. I got to do what he called me to do because he's been too good to me. Mm. 
Oh, y'all hear? I'm about to get out of your way. I want to close with this right here and say, look at somebody and say, I'm still salty. I'm still salty. God gave me that. He said, listen, you're still salty. Out of all the 28 years of preaching you've been preaching, you're still salty. People see you behind the pulpit, but they don't know the situations that you have to live through. And then you know situations can dilute you. You can go through something you can feel like you've lost. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You could go through a relationship. You could go through a bad job. You could go through a bad experience, and you feel like you lost your edge. But don't it feel good when you when you get back to where you need it? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. You would have to have lost something to understand what I'm talking about. The feeling that comes back over you when you say, God is coming back. My prayer is coming back. Uh, my waving on my hands is coming back. You would have to have to lose something to be able to gain something. Mm. The fact that you're still salty show, is showing the world that no matter what comes at you, you're still going to stand. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? We've got testimonies of last year how God raised people up still standing. Got testimonies that God healed people from coronavirus, still standing. Got testimonies that ain't got a job, but yet still you're in your house, you got your car, still standing. And you can go through so much and tell you to lose the saltiness from over your life, uh, but the devil is a liar. Oh, somebody's got to get this. Uh, have you ever been through something and you lost it, and you know you lost it? And you say, God, if you ever give it back to me, I won't let nobody touch it this time. Uh, God, my prayer life took a hit. Uh, the way I love my wife and my husband took a hit. But if you restore, oh my goodness, my joy, Lord God, I give you salt that you ain't never seen before. I give you praise you ain't never seen before. If you just grab me one more time. I, I remember when Samson said, God, I, I know I failed you. They put my eyes out. They cut my hair. But they said they put him through two pillars. And he prayed to God. He said, if you would. Listen, we are out of time, but I'm, I'm not out of word. I'm so excited to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. It does my heart well to be able to preach you and to encourage you and to push you into your destiny in Jesus Christ. And until next Saturday on this station is your season. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so honored to have shared this time with you. If this message has truly blessed you and you desire a copy as well as other ministry materials, please stay tuned. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. No one likes this type of preaching, but I'm a preacher anyway. This is not a message I'm talking about. Oh. For your love gift of any size, you will receive this message in its entirety on CD. Oh, God get ready to do this and God get ready to know. It's telling you right now, you have been given through Christ Jesus everything that you need to be successful, to be this, that, and the other, but you got... For your love gift of $25, we will send you this dynamic message on CD and DVD. People see you behind the pulpit, but they don't know the situations that you have to live through. And then you know situations can dilute you. You can go through something you can feel like you've lost. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You could go through a relationship. You could go through a bad job. You could go through a bad experience and you feel like you lost your end. And when your love gift is $50, we will send you this message on CD, DVD, and this inspiring book by Bishop Felton. Until next time, it's your season.